987% increase in meat-free products in the UK alone last year. That's nearly a thousand percent increase. Okay, did that happen because people were sitting there nice and quietly not wanting to? No, that happens because activists are standing up. Did blacks get their rights because activists sat down and did nothing? Did women get their rights because activists stood by and said nothing? No, no, these things happen because people spoke up. They had enough. They wanted justice. We're going to pack up, okay, pack up all the signs, pack up all the food, pack up all the tables, take it all to the car, okay? And about 15 minutes, we're gonna hang out near the cars, all right, and then we'll come back. Okay, so then what they, do, what they probably will do is radio through to the trucks. Apparently, there's some trucks being held back. Then they'll send them through, and by that time, we'll be back here, and um, yeah, try and trick them. They trick us, we'll trick them. Filming? Slots are even too high, they're so much higher than what, what the cattle is. They're like, look how much higher it is. So you can't see their faces, you can see dairy cows. Okay, so what they did is they held the trucks back because they knew I was going to be here and I've got a big social media presence so they didn't want that type of publicity. So we packed up, we left, pretended that we left and now we come back and the truck came immediately. Courage is feeling the fear and doing it anyway. Okay, and it's a liberating feeling. Okay, when you have that nervous anxiety and you just go for it anyway. Okay, nothing's going to happen to you. The only thing that's going to happen to you is going to build confidence and you're going to be a more powerful voice for the animals and we need you now. Not, not next year when you, you develop some confidence, we need you now. The trucks that they're using now have got a really high top, so it's really hard to see the cattle inside. But we had a selfie stick, you can sort of see that they're spent dairy cows. And they say from farm to plate, they miss out the struggle that happens in a slaughterhouse, you know. Right here is where the animals are being killed. This tunnel here looks like where they're led. There's nothing more powerful than showing someone what happens inside of a slaughterhouse because they make up a story in their mind about what happens to animals. And I don't know where this story comes from. Maybe it's the milk carton with the, the humane label and the, the happy cows. But you can t take me to the most humane slaughterhouse on earth. You can hear the cows distressed. Your imagination does not do it justice, okay? Nowhere near. And I realised, wait a second, no, I'm doing this for those dairy slaves that'll be, have their children taken off them and be strung up and killed after a life of slavery. Poor things. We're out the front of a, a slaughterhouse yesterday and you could hear the, the, the cows getting prodded down the line, dairy cows, okay? You could hear them bellowing out. You know, they were so scared, so scared, and they walk into this big factory, smelling of blood, body parts everywhere, blood all over the floor. Who's really scared? This is, this is what I mean about perspective. Think about that. Okay, so these are spent dairy cows in here, um, exploited mothers, and what happens is when they don't produce milk anymore, when they're not financially viable for the farmer, they send them all to get killed here. No matter what dairy farm it is, they send them all to get killed here. Um, when you go to a cow slaughterhouse, Cattle slaughterhouse, a lot of the cow cattle that come in are, are spent dairy cows, so they've had their children taken off of them. Their whole lives suffered maternal trauma. And this is what they have to look forward to, a kill floor. They're probably walking in there and they can s Poor darlings. They're probably walking in there, can smell the blood, can see body parts of their friends and... It's a horrible place in there. It's really hard because they're just through that 
just through that fence there and we can't help them like this they're bellowing out for help or someone to help them and they won't get any help they won't get any compassion they'll just get a bolt gun in the head and a knife across the throat this is what human beings are doing to animals the, the oldest they will live is in the dairy industry, they might live to five or six years, but that is because they can still produce milk and pr provide a product. But once they can't provide that product anymore, they're slaughtered. This is because people want to eat burgers. I mean, half of the beef here in this country in the UK comes from spent dairy cows. Now, in other countries, you're probably eating the, the corpse of a spent dairy cow. I, didn't, I did not look at a piece of cheese and see that, you know, because it's a little bit far down the line. This gives you an eerie feeling, doesn't it? Human beings aren't natural killers, okay? They can be, you can condition someone to be violent. Like that happens from their environment, yeah? And there's residents just over here. There's houses just here. People that live right behind here, hearing these cows bellow out. They probably eat cows too. And they take her child from her when she, after she's given birth. She moans out for, she moans out for days. That milk is for humans. So you can eat their cheese, basically, which is just coagulated you know, breast milk cheeses. They add salt and stuff to it to make it taste nice. The first step is you go, wow, I've been causing immense pain and suffering with my actions. Okay, now I'm going to stop. It's crazy how conditioned we are to this violence, this horrific, you know, murder scene in here. They've done nothing wrong to us, these cows. So gentle and peaceful. And here they are screaming out for help. And animals cannot speak for themselves. They cannot voice their suffering to you. And when you go to the slaughterhouse, you will see them trying to, to beg for mercy and no one's listening. No one's listening. People look at a glass of milk and they don't think that they're doing anything wrong. And it's a little bit of a far stretch to think that a glass of milk is causing this to happen. But without, you know, without your money, the dairy industry doesn't exist. Okay, the dairy industry supports the beef industry, okay? They, they work hand in hand. You're eating cheese from cow's milk, you're eating chocolate from ch cow's milk, you're eating yogurt from cow's milk, you're eating, drinking, you know, milkshakes from the breast of a cow. This is what you're supporting, you know? Wholesale slaughter of innocent beings. So when you eat cheese, you, you're basically condemning these animals to slaughter and separating families. They show you the cow on the field and then they, they show you the plate with the steak on it, they don't show you the slaughterhouse in between, do they? People look at the carton of milk with a, a cow on the front with a nice green pasture and they think that these cows are somehow free. But these cows are slaves, they're not free, they have no freedom. Okay, we've already determined the day that they're going to die. Would, would that excuse justify owning a slave, you know? They're being used for their bodies. They're treated as products. There's no justification for this, literally none. And they're still being treated as products after their death. Their exploited, suffered, traumatized body will be sold to human beings so they can eat it. The females will be forcibly impregnated, have their children taken off of them until they can't produce milk anymore. So this happens after about five or six years. Can't produce milk, you know what happens to them? They go to a sanctuary? No, they get looked after in a sanctuary. No, they don't. They get slaughtered for their bodies so people can eat burgers. So, And when they're crying out like that, they're, ex they're expressing real emotion. They do scream in terror. They do uh, try to avoid pain and suffering, but humans aren't listening. Cows express emotion. Sadness. Um, when their child gets taken, they bellow out for days. What is that? That's emotion they're feeling. We're putting them through this. See, it's a lot of all animal deaths when, when we're killing them to consume them when we don't need to for our survival all of those deaths are in vain I don't know how traumatic that would be just waiting for your turn to be killed think about that put yourself in the animals position here you know you've been driven on a truck somewhere where you're not you know you're not coming back from okay because you've seen other cows hop on that same truck and they haven't come back so you're, you're on your way on this truck and you get led into this dark corridor and you come into an opening where there's nothing but the smell of blood okay you imagine how anxious and scared they would feel right now okay if you let fear that fear run your life it grows you're giving fear power there's nothing to be afraid of and also perspective remember perspective who's really in fear the, the anxious animals on the way to the slaughterhouse or getting prodded down that line, something overcomes you when you, when you see those animals, okay? 
you realize, wow, they're suffering more than me. Who's really got the anxiety here? And you can hear it in the, the desperation in their calls. They do not want to die. Okay, somehow people think that they're, they're going in here voluntarily. No, they're not going in here voluntarily. They're getting pushed down the kill line. Treated as units of production. Out the front there, it says Linden Foods. Linden Foods. These sentient beings are being labeled a food product, a piece of material to be commodified. Their skin will be turned into a pair of shoes or a jacket or a belt for human beings to wear after they've had their burger with their bodies in it. I'd say I'm not sure a nice day is what we're going to be having. What, side outside on the sun? Yeah, but there's animals being slaughtered inside, aren't they, against well, their will? Yeah, well, um, yeah. Yeah, it's a bit of a yeah. sad. If you go around the side, you can hear them bellowing out for mercy. And well, I used to work in a slaughterhouse when I was a young lad. Yeah, yeah, and it's not a nice. Place not a nice place. No, it's not. No, and I agree with you on that one. I just wonder if people knew that their food screamed out for mercy before they ate it. Okay, if people knew that your your food bellowed with fear before your food was killed. Society pushes people into these types of jobs, don't they? Yeah, because society wants to eat flesh, don't they? So they have to have people uh, in there stabbing animals, which is a pretty harsh job. I don't know. It's not yeah. going to say, is it? I'm yeah. I've got to be... Unbiased. You're on duty, you don't have I'm an unbiased. opinion. Unbiased. You're unbiased? unbiased? Yeah. yeah. And that's all veganism is. It's showing animals mercy. Okay, that's all we want you to do. Give these innocent beings mercy they deserve. They've done nothing wrong to us. And can't we show... the the true nature of a human being showing compassion. They just want us to stop doing this to them. It's hard to know which sound is actually the bolt gun. I don't like those sounds. There's machines in there that kill animals, and that's what those sounds are. They're spraying the floor of the blood after they slash the animal's throat. A bolt gun. They get put in something called a knock box where they can't move. They get bolt gunned in the head, hung upside down by their hind leg, and dismembered. And you have to ask yourself, is a piece of cheese worth that? Okay, when we have vegan cheese. Is a glass of milk worth that when we have 30 different alternatives to, to, to cow's milk. Okay. It's illegal though, isn't it? What is? Stabbing animals to death for burgers. For bu well, it is legal. You can't well, legally go and stop them for animal cruelty, if can it's you? it's under, uh, you know, it's monitored and stuff like that. In, in yeah. industry walls. Well, yeah. It's hard to believe that what's happening behind those walls right now, okay, the horror that those animals are going through is completely legal and socially acceptable, okay? This is why something needs to change on Earth. This needs to change. This is not civilized, this is savage. This is savage, heartless behavior. And human beings aren't like that. Yeah. It doesn't change the morality of it though, does it? Morality. Yeah, like that it's immoral to take an animal's life against their will. Because out here you would stop them, wouldn't you? If you see me kill a dog out here, you'd stop me. But in there, because it's industry, they can well, kill as many animals as they want. I can't answer them questions, all I'm told, I'm a police officer, the government yeah, I know. rules. I know you are, man. Got us, you know. This is something hidden behind industry walls. Okay, we need to bring it to the light. Okay, every single human being watching this knows that these cows don't want to die. They don't want to be in there. But they also, the one thing they don't know is that you're making this happen. Someone's going to say something really insensitive, but the thing is they don't know what you know and they haven't seen what you've seen, so they're, they're coming from a place of um, sort of innocent ignorance, if you like. Do you care about animals though? I, I do actually, yeah. yeah. Quite a lot of animals. Every time you buy a carton of milk, you're saying this is okay. Okay, you're supporting this. We eat sushi, we eat burgers, we eat pizza, we eat cheese. Vegan cheese made out of plants. Like, listen to them. Listen to them, the poor animals. They're no different to your dog at home. The poor babies. On the streets, you're showing it to them, and obviously people have a picture in their mind of what they think a slaughterhouse looks like, which never does it justice. That's what you've got to ask yourself. Like, what have they ever done to us to deserve what we do to them? 
Like it says a lot about a society when we look at how we treat the most vulnerable, our children, you know, those who are more at our at our mercy. These animals. They're at they're at are you, they're at your mercy. Are you killing animals in there? I'm not killing. Them. Are you are you consuming animals? I do, yeah. Okay. The best thing we can do is to help the most vulnerable, and the most vulnerable are those who can't speak up for themselves. Nothing's worth this. All right, bub, let's go. Let's go. That's. I know, I know it's a neutral position you've got. I know the drill, mate, but something to think about, mate. What's legal and what's moral? Well, there's a lot of things that are legal that are unmoral, and there's immoral. A lot of things that are not legal that are the other way around. Yeah. That's just the world we're living, isn't it? It is. Not a very nice world to live in for animals, that's for sure. Well, you're right on that one. See, on the front of the cars there, it says, Police proud to protect. It's a pity they don't protect all beings, only some. I found it a lot in men, not gay men that I speak to, but straight men. They find it hard to, to be openly emotional or something, which I think is a weakness. Two to 2.7 trillion marine animals dragged out in the ocean, suffocated, stabbed so we can have fish in our sushi. The more educated you are, the more confident you are. Earthling Ed Spring brought out a series, 30 excuses in 30 days. Watch them. And then there's starving children, okay, that are going without food. And we're fattening up 70 billion land animals every year so we can eat their bodies. If you're educated on certain aspects, ethics is pretty important because ethics cannot be refuted. We're taking the food out of a hungry child's mouth and feeding it to, to cattle. Okay, not everyone can get out there and stop a slaughterhouse truck and I'm not asking everyone to. That might not be you. Okay, luckily we're all different. And luckily, my skill set isn't the same as each of yours. So you, everyone can bring something to the movement. That's all you have to do. Stand at the side of some trucks and put your phone up there. Okay, share, share a picture. You know, I'm not asking you to, to walk down the line with the cows. So we have to um, have a different idea of what activism actually is. Really not trying to reach vegans unless, unless I'm trying to get vegans active. I'm trying to reach non-vegans with the message so I want to communicate effectively. We taste like, like more like proper. Well, there's no bacteria, feces, salmonella, blood. You, this is right here in front of you. You're seeing people eating dead animals, paying for their murder right in front of your face. This isn't something that's happening in Syria that you have no control over. If you're vegan, you're vegan for a reason. You know what's going on. So when you know, then you have the obligation. Being vegan just doesn't hurt them, basically. Okay, being an activist helps them. It's the same injustice that's happening right now. Are we, are we gonna stand by and let that happen? People say, oh, how long till we get a vegan world, Joey? A lot sooner if you're out here with me, hey? So the conviction has to be strong in your why, all right? And you always remind yourself of why you're doing it and it keeps you going. We're still kicking massive goals. Okay, because the truth is more powerful than any propaganda they can perpetuate. Okay, they are scared of this movement. The dairy industry is shaking in their boots. Okay, because they cannot, they cannot lie to us any, anymore. Okay, injustice cannot last forever. Although it can last for a very long time, it cannot last forever. Okay, we've got the truth on our side. Okay, there's no denying that. Now, if they took the internet off of us, we've still got a movement. Okay, because we'd take to the streets and we'd revolt. Okay, they couldn't, there's nothing they could do to stop it now. There's too many of us now. I get criticized by non-vegans, vegans, and other activists. Okay, luckily, we're not doing it for any of them, are we? Who are we doing it for? Animals. And I guarantee you, they would not criticize you if you're trying to help. So just keep that in mind. The animals wouldn't criticize you. Okay, they'd be, they'd be so grateful for, for whatever you're doing for them unwavering belief. No one can tell me any different. This has happened already in my mind. Now, I honestly believe this is possible. That's why I fight so hard. And this is a very important time right now. That's why we all need to be on it, on it. But that's why I say, if you remain silent, you've missed an opportunity, a golden opportunity there to be either that first seed planted or that last bit to finish them off. Okay, we don't want no money from you. We want people to stop hurting animals with their food choices. So. If we don't stick together, we are a weaker force. We need to stay together in solidarity is what's going to make this movement like skyrocket. It really is. Hello. How are you? Hello. How are you? At the road. <laughs> Hello, everyone. It's land of hope and glory. You get them to watch that. More powerful than any pamphlet you could give them. Everything's in there. That's what they're actually showing. Land of hope and glory. This is Land of Hope and Glory. 
This is land of hope and glory, all high welfare, RSPCA approved. Red tractor approved uh, farms. On here you've got land of hope and glory. This, on the front here, this is land of hope and glory. Oh, you're a vegan? Yeah, of course, you can't care for animals while you're eating them, can you? Enjoy. Land of Hope and Glory was all filmed in the UK. Nelson Mandela said it, it always seems impossible until it's done. We've been waiting for you all this time. <laughs> nah, I'm joking. Sorry, it's a very intense thing to talk about. I know I might be hitting you a bit hard with it, but it's just basically what I'm saying is the, the truth. And I think, you, how old is 17, 18? 17, 18? Yeah, yeah. So you're old enough to know, you know, this sort of stuff. If I was in a younger school, I probably be, wouldn't be as, you know, hectic about it. But the things that you're exposed to on television and things like that, and you know, this is actually something we all have power in. We all have power in this. You can all, you can all make a choice today to, to stop con contributing to this. Okay, and I'll give you a re resource for that. It's called Challenge 22. It's on the back of my cards. And it's just an important thing to be a part of. It really is. So boosting the numbers here is really important because they see, wow, wow, there's more people here. What's going on? It makes a really, sends a strong message. Yeah, anything can happen at these vigils, so you never really know, but. So I just want to say thank you to everyone who come uh, out and did activism with us and come and said hello. It's really inspiring to see the movement growing in so many places. I don't plan on stopping till, you know, we get what we want. And if that has, has to happen till I die, then I hope you all feel the same way. You know, we want animals to be freed. This shouldn't be happening in this day and age. It's just ridiculous that we even have to be standing here. It's so absurd that we have to be teaching people that it's wrong to murder innocent beings. But this is just the way society is. It takes a while for society to catch up. But it will catch up a lot faster if we all do something about it. So keep going. Thank you very much. Uh, who come and marched uh, the UK march last year? None of you. One, here we go, excellent. I want to see you all out this year. Okay, I want to see you all there this year, all right? All of you out to march this year, okay? 